the fundamental concepts in programming is called the dry concept. And dry stands for don't repeat yourself. So you're going to be writing code, but and you might need to do something a few times. And it makes absolutely no sense to do the same thing over and over again. If you've already solved the problem once, there's no point in solving it the same way three, four, or five other times. And one of the ways programming languages have sought to, to prevent, uh, pre prevent programmers from repeating themselves is by using functions. And functions are basically reusable code. Now, languages come with their own functions, but we can also write our own functions. And we're going to do both today. We're going to look at a built-in function in Ruby, and we're also going to build our own function. So the function we are going to look at today is called put s. So put s takes a string as an argument. And what put s does is it prints the string to the console. So let's run our first Ruby program. Come up to run, go bang, we go hello world. Congrats, you just ran your first program. You're almost a 10x developer. Alternatively, now that we've set up run, we can just do play. Now, put s can either take the string directly or we can pass it a variable which holds the string. So, Right here, I am calling put s, and then I am passing it. I'm putting message into put s. Put s has its own code that's stored somewhere else, and it takes whatever we give it, the message we give it, the string we give it, and it just puts it to the string, to the screen. I'm sorry. Now, in programming languages like Python or C++ or Dart, when you have a function, you wrap the arguments of the function in parentheses. In Ruby, you don't have to do this. So this works exactly the same. But I like to keep the parentheses off because it just makes my code a lot more readable and I don't have to worry about, you know, not closing my parentheses or, you know, not closing my parentheses, um, not being able to keep track of my arguments, or it just looks, it's more readable in my opinion. So we're just calling someone else's code. Yeah, so I don't know if you, you, you might have heard of open source, but let me just give you a rundown. An open source language is a language that everyone contributes to. So say you had a business and everyone contributes to the business. That's, that's basically the same thing. You have, you have a bunch of different people who aren't getting paid building the Ruby language. And they built these functions for us to use. It's kind of nice because now that I think about it, I actually have no idea how I would, if from scratch, put something to the, on the screen. So it's great. Now, we're going to write our own functions. That way we can become uh, open source gurus. So with the function you do, you, if you're writing a big project, there's no shame in writing a little comment and saying, and writing what the function does puts a greeting and that's what our function will do and I spelled greeting wrong so you do def as in define that's short for define function name which we'll call greeting and then we'll do we'll do one argument so we'll do name and we do end so right here we have a little slice between def and end of reusable code and we can call this function later now name this is the argument that the function will take. And inside of the function, this, this argument will be used as a local variable. It is local as in the variable only exists inside of that function. If we do name down here, it, it doesn't mean anything. Name only means something in the context of this function. So we'll do put s. Oh geez, uh, put s, hello world, my name is hashtag uh, bracket 
name. So this is called string contication, what we did right here. The best way to think of this is, yep, I'm in string world, but I want to go back to Ruby world. I want to call a variable, do something with data. So I'm going to do hashtag brace, brace, and then put whatever I want in. In this case, I put the local variable name in there. Um, so say I forget the brace, I'm going to get an error. See this red line? Expected, oh God. Yeah, so expected string end. Same with this. I forgot to close my string with the quotation marks. I get this error, expected string end. So you got to close everything. Now, how am I going to call greeting? Well, I'm going to do greeting, and I'm going to pass it an argument, my name. So I do Corey, I pass it the string, and you see right here, this is like a little hint for what, what uh, argument you're passing. So I'm passing the, the string Corey as the name argument. Now I'm going to run this code. So this doesn't get run. This is just defining a function. And this, when you type the function's name, you're calling the function. What did that say? Greeting, private method. Yep, puts a greeting. Okay, nice. Wow, I didn't know it took uh, the comments. That's awesome. So yeah, I hovered over the function call and it just gave me some details about it. Now we press play. Hello world, my name is Corey. Now, say I had a bunch of people and I wanted to, I wanted them all to greet each other. Then I can, I can reuse this code, right? Now Marv, Gordon, they can reuse this code. They don't have to write their own code. It's an open source world. Everyone's happy. Information is free. I get, hello world, my name is Marv. Hello world, my name is Gordon. So I'm defining a function. That way I can define reusable code and I'm calling this reusable code. It's pretty awesome. So there's a bunch of built-in functions. If you're doing something simple, um, there's probably already a function out there that does it. So just look it up in the Ruby documentation. A big part of programming is just, if you don't know how to do something, Google it. So functions aren't permanent. We can, we can actually alter them and they can take more than one argument. So we're gonna do, you know, we'll do a favorite color. So fave color. So we're gonna greet the world and you know, we're gonna break the ice and we're gonna tell everyone our favorite color. So we do put my favorite color is, again, hashtag, bracket, and it'll automatically close the bracket for me, which is nice about RubyMine. Fate, and I call the local variable. Now, we're going to pass arguments into the function a different way. We're going to do name equals, let me capitalize this, Corey. We're going to do fav underscore color equals orange. So one thing I want to stress is that these, oh God, I spelled orange wrong. That's embarrassing. These are not the same as the name and fav color up here. These are global variables. They are not, and these are local variables. Okay. So these are completely different. They have the same name, but they're different. All you need to know is that these are available everywhere, but these are only available, these right here, they're only available between def and end. So you define the function, you end the function. I like Ruby better than other languages because it's really easy to see where a function ends because it puts end there. So we'll do greeting and we'll pass it the name argument, so variable name and then favorite color. And we can call it hello world my name is Corey my favorite color is orange so when you're when you're using variables as to pat when you're passing in variables as arguments to a function they don't need to be the same as the name of the arguments in the function so I can just do I can name this anything I can do X and I can do Y Do X here and Y here. 
and it still comes out the same. Oh, geez. Um, so yeah, I messed up the order, but yeah. So the 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 order you put the arguments in when defining the function will be the order the arguments are taken. So name will always be the first argument, and favorite color will always be the second argument. Um, is there anything else I want to cover? I think that is it, but I'm going to give you a little assignment so you can practice on your own. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a birthday argument to the greeting function. And then you are going to put, you're going to print the birthday out in the console by calling puts and using string concatenation. Then you are going to call the greeting function and pass it a name, favorite color, and birthday. And you can either do this directly or by, or by passing in variables. So this is just your little practice homework. It's good to get repetition. What I would recommend doing is following along what I do on screen, then playing with your own stuff, playing, like just messing around, just trying whatever, try to do your own stuff, create your own functions, whatever interests you really. But at the end of every episode, I'm going to try to give you some, uh, I don't want to say homework, but some practice things. That way you can get, you know, even more repetition and exercise your creativity. And then at the beginning of the last, the, at the beginning of the next episode, I'll solve the homework for you in case you're stuck and try to help you out. So why don't you try this problem right here and we'll see how it goes. I'll see you next time.